If the title of the video wasn't enough, I will take this opportunity to throw in the obligatory spoiler warning. If you don't want to ruin some of the surprises in Samus Returns, I suggest you stop the video right now and come back after you've seen all the chosen memories yourself. With all that said, I have one message for Sakamoto. I need some closure, please. Earlier this year, when Nintendo announced Samus Returns out of nowhere, my little Metroid fan brain just exploded in the hype and anticipation over the return of the 2D formula that I grew up with. But once my own excitement had settled, I started wondering if this remake would take a similar path like Zero Mission and give us some more backstory to Samus' mission or of the mysterious planet SR388. And to my amazement, Yoshio Sakamoto, producer of Samus Returns and many other games in the series, revealed on Gamescon 2017 that the remake will have some bonus backstory of the events that happen on the planet in the form of the Choso memories. As the name might imply, these memories tell a little story of when the Choso first arrive on the Uncharted planet in the form of these beautifully drawn illustrations. These images will serve as a reward to the players that collected all the items in each area of the game for a grand total of 10 memories. To Metroid fans, these images would work as a great incentive to explore the world and finally be able to learn just a little bit more about the mysterious race that has had a great impact on almost every major event in the franchise. But while these memories might not be as complicated to understand at first glance, some things might not be as clear as they seem. The first memory is by far the most straightforward. It simply depicts the Choso first arriving on the surface of planet SR388 and hints that they are not native to this planet because of the spaceship seen in the background. In here we're also presented to our protagonist, the overseers of this expedition and of the operations that may be conducted on the planet. During their expeditions, the Choso discover a strange source of energy referred to as Aeon, which seems to be the life force of all the organisms on the planet. We can see that scientists are trying to have some studies on the substance to perhaps determine any beneficial uses that it can have to their people. The interesting detail about this memory is that it confirms Aeon as much more than just a simple gameplay gimmick, but that it's actually tied to the lore just like the face on was during the Prime Trilogy. The scientists most likely came to the conclusion that this new energy source could be useful to them, and so a large-scale excavation is set out to perhaps find if there's any main source to this Aeon. We see a number of chosen machines lining up to begin digging deeper into the planet, alongside some warriors who are ready to combat any dangers that they may encounter below. But the excavations reveal something far more sinister than what the overseers might have bargained for. They discover a life form so dangerous that it could defeat any warrior with ease in the form of the sinister X parasites. These parasites are obviously the main antagonists in Metroid Fusion, and this game reconfirms that they are indigenous to SR388. The creatures possess an incredible ability, since they are able to infect any host and take control of their bodies, or even copy their DNA after their death to become an X-clone of said host. The X-parasites appear to have no weakness and can quickly devour anything in their path, thus forcing the Choso to retreat and devise a plan to defend themselves against this new threat. At this point, the Choso find themselves in a complicated situation. If they wanted to continue investigating the planet, they would have to find a way to overcome the X, but even as it is, they couldn't just let the species go by and possibly take over the galaxy. And so the Choso set out to create something strong enough to stop them, a bioengineered lifeform that could counter the parasites and would ultimately change the course of history, thus marking the birth of the Metroids. While it's been told before that the Metroids were made by them, this is the first time we actually see the Choso creating the Parasites, and on planet SR388 nonetheless. So to Die Hard fans, it was a treat to see this old myth finally come to light in one of the game's lore. With their newly engineered weapons at their side, the Overseers unleashed the Metroids onto the X-Parasites, who successfully counterattacked them regardless of what form the threat took. The Metroids latch onto their prey and absorb the energy or life force out of them leaving no way for the X to escape their deadly grasp, and so, their demise seems to be at hand. With the threat of the X seemingly taken care of, the Overseers are able to continue their operations on the planet, and so mining is once again continued. This memory also shows that the Metroids are docile to their creators, hinting that the Chosen are indeed able to control them. 
This detail can also correlate or foreshadow to how Mother Brain is able to control them in the future. And so everything seems to have returned to normal. But one last issue would ultimately squander all of the efforts made by the Chosen. Something unforeseen has happened. The once tamed Metroids have started evolving and began attacking anything in sight, even their own creators. From the looks of this memory, this was a surprise to the Chosen. Maybe the Metroids weren't intended to evolve, and this is more of a mutation. While there is no confirmed reason why this occurred, I have my own tinfoil hat theory as to what could have caused this incident. To simply put it, the Aeon energy might have been the culprit for this startling behavior. The Metroids absorb the life energy of the prey, and since everything on SR388 had Aeon, a newly discovered substance to the Chozo, they didn't account for what it could do to their creations. This could also explain why they only evolved on SR388, because so far, Aeon is only available on this planet. This theory is also applicable to the Omega Metroid at the end of Fusion, because it fed on the ex-parasites on the BSL station that came from the planet and probably had the energy in them as well. The main issue with this theory, however, is the Queen Metroid in Other M. Since the battleship was supposed to simulate more of the habitat and life forms of Seves, I doubt there was any Aeon aboard it. So perhaps the Queen was a result of experimentation done by the Federation, or that perhaps the baby Metroid was destined to evolve into a Queen, marking the start of a new breed of Metroids altogether. Only special infants had the genetic coding to become Queens. Regardless of what caused their evolutions, the Metroids quickly started overpowering their masters and with no easy way to stop them, the Chozo have no other option but to flee. As the Metroids continue to take stronger forms, the Chozo have been forced to abandon their operations and call for a rescue. Since they can't destroy the creatures easily, the Overseers instead decide to seal the monsters away to prevent them from escaping the planet and from anyone else discovering their horrors. We can assume that many warriors sacrifice themselves to hold the parasites back as they flutter the caverns with a dangerous purple liquid, giving the Overseers a chance to escape and warn others of their discovery. And as they reach towards the surface, they can only hope that their plan can successfully contain the beast that they created. The Overseers manage to reach the surface, where they meet with a Choso elite who came to their aid with an armada standing ready to fight any possible threat and they warn him of the dangerous discoveries that were made in the caverns below. The Chozo, who once came looking for new wonders to aid their people, ultimately encountered and created one of the biggest threats the galaxy has come to know. But fortunately now, with the arrival of their rescue, the Overseers are safe and perhaps ready to find a way to correct their mistakes, and so ending our story on planet SR388. Turns out that the elite Choso was concealing a weapon all along and struck down the Overseers, seemingly killing them in the process, and signals his armada to move onto the planet, perhaps looking for something far too valuable to lose. Now, while there really isn't enough information to understand exactly what happened on the 11th memory, the first thought that came to mind was that the elite Choso executed the Overseers, fearing that his brethren were infected by the ex parasites. But seeing as the Metroids basically wiped out the X defending their creators, I find it unlikely to be the case. Especially seeing that it's only after Samus's mission that the Parasites were able to replicate and reach the surface of the planet. My second thought was that this Chozo warrior could have other intentions and came seeking for the Metroids or the Aeon for himself, killing the scientists that were the only ones who stood on his way and effectively covering up anything that happened on SR-388. And it's not something hard to believe, since Samus Returns shows in its opening that the Federation were able to capture one Metroid from the planet before it was stolen by the pirates kickstarting the events of Zero Mission. And you do also encounter one of them in the surface level before it evolves into an Alpha Metroid. And for something as deadly as a Metroid, it would make sense to bring an armada to try and contain them, since at this stage they are uncontrollable and even more dangerous. The bigger question that lies is, if this was the case, then what is exactly Elite planning to use the Metroids for? And whether or not the other Chozo are aware of his actions? Is there a larger threat at hand that we don't know of? Or was it past ambitions of the warrior ways that created a divide on their people? If anything, the last memory possibly left an extremely vague clue that could point to another installment in the series that might give us our answers. 
This theory is quite the stretch, but I think it's worth mentioning. During the reveal of the secret image, the game displays the 11th Choso memory as number 2D out of 10. While at first I was confused and assumed that there could be more secret memories hidden with each difficulty, I was able to come up with something using this naming convention by itself. In mathematics, a division can also be represented with a forward slash. Dividing 10 by 2 leaves us with 5 and the letter D, which is displayed in red, perhaps hinting at the misspelling of the word dread. In other words, this could be translated into 5 dread, which if correct could hint at the once-canceled title Metroid Dread may be coming into production and possibly be the much-anticipated sequel to Fusion, with the red 2 and D teasing at it being another 2D game. But time will tell whether this theory is correct or not. And until then, the only thing we can do is wait and see if we will ever get to know more about the Choso Elite's true intentions, and what they can ultimately mean to the universe of the franchise. Great, now I have a new cliffhanger that's gonna bug me for another 10 years. Well, this and the post credit scene for Xenoblade Chronicles X. It's this planet. It's something about this planet. <laughs>